Hello, good evening, and a happy St. David's Day. Welcome to another episode of Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Welcome to my home in beautiful Lime Bay. Big thank you for joining me once again for our regular late night visit to those dusty studio archives of old time radio shows right here at my home on the south coast of the United Kingdom. Now, if you want to drop me a line and just say hello, I'd love to hear from you. Brett at touradate.co.uk. That's where we're at. I am Brett. I'm your host for our Nighttime Podcast and welcome to another episode. I've got a Facebook page, an Instagram page and a YouTube channel. They're all called Brett's Old Time Radio Show and if you could give me a little follow, I would really, really appreciate it. Now, I've got a few PC issues going on today. Not not politically correct. Uh, computer issues. I don't know what's going on. It's all a bit weird. So I'm hoping everything gets recorded okay and I'm hoping everything works. Now then, it is time now for our latest episode of Rocky Jordan. We're heading off to Cairo for an episode called Death in the Sand. This was first broadcast on the 1st of February, 1949. Time now for Rocky Jordan. Things had been dull around the tambourine until I got that invitation to the tent of a desert sheik. And it was a great party. The host was fine, the food was fine. And there was a dancing girl. She was fine, too. But I shouldn't have puffed on that Egyptian water pipe. Two whiffs of that, and everything went up in smoke. Again, we bring you a story of adventure with Rocky Jordan, proprietor of the Cafe Tambourine, which stands in a narrow street off Cairo's native quarter within sight of the Mosque Sultan Hassan. The Cafe Tambourine, crowded with forgotten men from the world's waterfronts, alive with the babble of many languages. Now, Rocky Jordan and tonight's story, Death in the Sand. It was all quite a setup. Rocky Jordan, the guest of honor of Sheikh Abbas Ali and his caravan tent on the desert. But I didn't like the way the festivities ended up, with two wild tribesmen accompanied by a blonde named Diana Carrington dragging me into Cairo police headquarters on a charge of murder. I guess it all started early that afternoon. I was sitting at a back table in my cafe when a little fellow in native dress came shuffling my way. Effendi, you are Rocky Jordan. Who'd you expect, the Sphinx? I am Ishmi, Effendi. I am a sand diviner. I'll take it somewhere else, Ishmi. Try some of the tourists up front. They'll bite. Wait, Mr. Jordan, one moment. Your future came to me as I was reading the sand. Tells of strange things for you, Effendi. Yeah? Like what? I will read the sand for you, Mr. Jordan. It reveals all the past, present, and future. First, the pure white cloth on the table. Look, why not just skip the hocus-pocus and get to the point? And now, on to the cloth, sand of the Sahara, from my diviner's pouch. You're going to have to clean that up, you know. Now, I take the sand so in my fingers. I let it rain down between my fingers so. The mystic sand. All right, just keep it out of my coffee. Yes, ma. I see it again. A letter. Uh, that's standard. This letter is to Mr. Rocky Jordan. It is you. <laughs> you are this man. But now, I see a trip into the desert. Still standard. But now, Effendi, a beautiful woman. A sleek ash blonde like pure crystal. Oh, you're improving. Tell me more. I will try, Effendi. Uh, no, no, she is fading Wait. No. No, this this cannot be. Come on, Ishmi. Get to the payoff line. No, Mr. Jordan, please. I cannot tell you this. Kata. Keep it in English and get it over with, huh? Very well, Mr. Jordan. I see it in the sand. I cannot mistake it. What? I see death. Uh, that's enough, Ishmi. Who sent you here? I no one sent me here, Mr. Jordan. I'm only an humble sand diviner. I have the gift. Then take it somewhere else. You'll find plenty of yokels out around the pyramids. Imshi, Ishmi, Imshi. Very well. I will leave it, Andy, as you wish. As you... Little Ishmi took his sand pouch and the hurt look in his face out the front way, and I sat looking at the pile of sand on the white cloth he'd left on my table. 
Every time somebody comes into the tambourine with that sort of pitch, I begin wondering. And I didn't stop wondering when she came toward my table. She was beautiful, ash blonde, like pure crystal. You are Mr. Rocky Jordan, I believe? Why, uh, yes, yes. Won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Jordan, I am Diana Carrington. Well, I'm glad to know you, Miss uh, uh, Diana. Oh, thank you for being informal. Rocky, I have a letter for you from Sheikh Abbas Ali. Here, open it. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, my dear Rocky Jordan, I would be honored to have you as a guest at my tent on the desert this evening after prayers. There's a gift for you of rare beauty. I will await your coming. Signed, Sheikh Abbas Ali. Hey, this is all right. You will go. Why not? I understand the Sheik puts on quite a party. Ah, good. I'll pick you up here at the Tamron at six. You mean you're invited to? Certainly. Do you mind? What? No, of course not. Okay, I'll be on tap at six. Good. I'm sure the Sheik's gift will be a great surprise. Goodbye, Rocky. <laughs> Diana threw me a radiant smile and walked out. It occurred to me the sand diviner's reading of my future was coming true a little too fast. A letter, a crystal blonde, and a trip to the desert. I picked up the square cotton cloth Ishmi had left on the table. It was a napkin bearing the stamp of the Heliopolis Hotel. I decided my little sand diviner had a lot more to tell me, and the quicker the better. <laughs> The Oasis Room of the Heliopolis Hotel is fixed up like a Hollywood B-picture set. Paper mache palms, an oasis made of blue glass with some sand in it. I went in and sat down. Ishmi sat at a table across the room reading the sand for a couple of goggle-eyed tourists. He saw me, jumped, and looked quickly away. And my vision was suddenly blocked by a menu the size of a Sunday newspaper. On the front cover was the picture of one of the handsomest Arabians I'd ever seen. Your service, monsieur? Oh, I, uh, I didn't bring my glasses. Oh, uh, then may I suggest our specialty? Rice of the Nile, exotic nuts of Arabia, spices from India, blended into a dish fit for a pharaoh's taste. Bring me a plate of ham and eggs. Ah, oh, as you wish, monsieur. And send that sand of over to my table. I'm worried about my future. At once, monsieur. The waiter stepped over to Ishmi and whispered something in his ear, but Ishmi stayed put. I waited... I finally caught his eye and beckoned to him. Instead of coming over, he turned and disappeared down a hallway. So I got up and followed. When I reached the hall, Ishmi was gone. There were several doors, and I chose the one marked manager. Seated behind a mahogany desk was the handsome Arab whose picture I'd seen on the menu. The picture didn't do him justice. He was clean-shaven in perfect British dress. As he stood up, he towered over me. May I help you, sir? Why, uh... You the manager? That is correct. I am Master Symbol. Oh, I'm Rocky Jordan, Cafe Tambourine. I am delighted to meet you, Mr. Jordan. Please be seated. No, no thanks. Uh, looking for a little guy named Ishmi. Oh, our sand diviner. You will find him in the Oasis room. Uh, not anymore. He's avoiding me like my credit is. I don't like it. That is indeed strange, Mr. Jordan. Ishmi has been in my employ for six years. He is my finest attraction. Well, then maybe you can explain what he was doing at my cafe this afternoon. I am sure I do not know. I didn't mind so much his scattering sand all over my place, but he predicted my future a little too accurately. Oh, that is understandable. Ishmi is the finest sand diviner in all Cairo. He has the gift. They don't tell me you think he's on the level. Most certainly. He reads the sand for me often. Ishmi has never failed to predict the future. Huh? Well, thanks. Uh, sorry for busting in, Mr. Symbol. No offense, sir. Well, as your people say, may your mother give you many brothers. Oh, so kind of you. But one brother was plenty. Even then, she could not tell us apart. Well, I'd love to hear about it sometime. Now I will find Ishmi for you. No, thanks, friend. I wouldn't want to offend such a remarkable gift. Asa Symbol's eyes narrowed for a second. Then he smiled and bowed graciously as I got out. A cover-up if I ever saw one. By now, a herd of elephants couldn't have kept me away from the sheik's tent. So I was waiting that evening when Diana drove up in her little Austin 7. We crossed the English bridge, honked a couple of dogs out of the way, and roared out past Giza. The road got rougher and rougher, and finally we made it to Sheikh Abbas Ali's encampment. Four or five tents, camels and goats, tethered downwind. Sheikh Abbas Ali's tent opening must have been six feet high, but he had to bend down to come out. Peace be unto you. 
Uh, we appreciate the invitation, Abbas. Alaikum salam, Sheikh Ali. My house is your house. Come now inside. The food is prepared. <laughs> I've heard your meals even top my blue plate special, Abbas. I trust you will enjoy it. Seat yourselves now. Oh, uh, do you wish forks and spoons? We'll take it your way, Abbas. <laughs> Rocky was a little surprised that you should invite a woman as your guest, Sheikh Ali. You see, Rocky, we at times yield to the customs of your people. You are very gracious. We all said bismillah, and then the sheik gave us kush kush and watched us burn our fingers eating it. There were about five courses, all hot. We finished eating, and then the sheik politely suggested that Diana go to the tent of his wives. She went, and Abbas watched my reaction. There is a reason not for the years of Miss Carrington. Oh, so that's it. Rocky, you are a non-believer, but you are my friend. That's right. I like you, Rocky, and I can speak to you. Sure, sure, shoot. I live on the desert. I do not come often to Cairo, but now that I have come to Cairo, I can speak to you. Sure, Abbas. Friendship is a rare thing. There are passages on the matter in the Koran. Uh, sure, now, what does she want to talk to me about? Rocky, you have no wife. <laughs> hey, wait a second. I do not suggest that you have two or three wives such as I. But one moment, Rocky. <laughs> Now you will see something, Rocky. Hey. She is beautiful, no? She is. She dances with the grace of a palm frond. Rocky, she is my gift to you. She will be your wife. Oh, now, wait, up. There's nothing doing. You're very thoughtful, but I'm just not interested. Oh, let us not argue. We are good friends. We will smoke the water pipe and then discuss it further. She was light brown, the color of the café con leche the Spaniards drink in Morocco. She had on the veil over her face, of course, and a little bit more. We smoked the water pipe as she danced. We sucked the smoke up through the long tube from the water in the glass bowl of the water pipe. The sucking made the water waver. I could see the girl reflected in the water in the glass bowl of the water pipe. She seemed to waver like a reflection when a stone is dropped into a pool. She tilted and wavered, expanded contracted. I looked up. I wasn't looking into the bowl, but she was still wavering, like water. The music was a long way off. Water seemed to be getting in between us and filling the tent, the whole tent. Then I knew why. The water pipe had been drugged. And as I drifted off into dreamland, I remembered what Ishmael had read in the sand. Death. I wondered if I was the victim. Rocky Jordan returns in just a moment. But first, here's a word about one of the most popular shows in radio. The program, CBS Radio Theater. And this week, you'll enjoy The Mating of Millie, a hilarious Cinderella story starring Glenn Ford and Evelyn Keyes. So start your week with a pleasant hour of fine comedy. CBS Radio Theater, Monday night at 6. Now back to tonight's story with Rocky Jordan, Death in the Sand. Well, as I said, Ishmi, the sand of honest predictions about my future were coming true a little too fast including a beautiful blonde, a letter, and a trip to the desert. I checked on Ishmi with his employer, Asa Symbol, at the Heliopolis Hotel, but didn't get any satisfaction. That evening, the blonde named Diana Carrington and I went to the desert tent of Sheikh Abbas Ali. I smoked a water pipe and curtains. I don't know how long I was out, maybe half an hour. Then my senses slowly returned. Through the haze, and then more clearly, I saw Sheikh Abbas Ali still seated across from me. The water pipe still in his mouth. The music had stopped and the dancing girl was gone. Sheikh Abbas didn't move. His chin rested on his beard. I spoke. He didn't answer. I got to my feet and moved over to him. I reached out and touched him. Then stiffly, grotesquely, he toppled over. I bent over him and a sickening smell like ether almost sent me spiraling off again. 
I heard the rustle of the tent flap and turn. It was Diana. Rocky, I think it's about time we told Sheikh Ali... Why? What's the matter? Sheikh Ali... Better not touch him, Diana. He's dead. Dead? Rocky, what did you do to him? Why did you do it, Rocky? I was drugged, that, that water pipe. You were here with him every minute. You killed Why him. Why should I kill him? Somebody must have drugged us both. Sama! Diana, what are you doing? Sama. You get those wild tribesmen in here. Sama, and... hurry! I want Miss Diana. Both of you, look at your chief. Sheikh Abbas Ali is dead. Who do this? Rocky Jordan was here. You! Kill me, Stop! Kill me, Stop! Kill me, Kill me, Kill me, Call off those two dervishes, will you? Get some sense into your head, Diana. Now, Rocky, we'll see what the Cairo police think of murder. Samak Abdul, bring him along. The two wild tribesmen took me, one on each arm, to Diana's tiny Austin 7. We all piled inside somehow. Diana drove and we roared into Cairo. At least it gave me time to get my head clear and have a look at things. I tried to figure Diana and Sheikh Abbas Ali... The tribesmen from the sheik's caravan obeyed her every command. The car screeched to a stop in front of police headquarters. The two hefty camel boys dragged me in right through to Sam Sabaya's office. Diana didn't wait for questions. And, and Sheikh Abbas Ali lay on the carpet dead. And Rocky standing over him. Jordan, kill him. I'll do the talking, Samak. Kill him with water pipe. Don't be stupid. What would I have against Abbas Ali? You were there all the time. Yes. I told you I was drunk. Please, water please, please not come, Jordan. All of you. Captain Sabaya, how can we become... Miss Carrington. Now, Jordan, you have heard the accusations. I suggest now that we hear your version of this affair. Well, it's about time. Go on, Jordan. Diana brought me an invitation from Sheikh Abbas Ali this afternoon. The Sheikh and I were friends, so I accepted. Diana drove me out to his encampment herself. He said he wanted to talk to me alone, so he sent her to the tent of his wives. Then a girl danced for us. We smoked a water pipe, and I passed out. When I came to, Abbas was dead. That's all I know. Miss Carrington, who saw Jordan commit this murder? Why, well, no one actually saw him, Captain Sabaya, but Rocky was there. I was drugged, Sam. How could I have done it? Was Sheikh Ali also drugged? I don't know. These overgrown sand fleas didn't give me a chance to find out. Then there is little more to be learned until the body is examined, and that we shall do at once. But, but Captain Sabaya, do you think that will be possible? The, the Sheikh's wives may already have buried him. I have considered that possibility, so I must leave for the encampment immediately. Well, what about me, Sam? Jordan, it stands to reason that you would not have killed the Sheikh and then drugged yourself. So until your accusers find greater proof, I will release you. You're, you're letting him go, Captain Sabaya? Yeah. Are these two wolves in Sheikh's clothing waiting to tear me to pieces? I will advise them to leave you completely alone, Jordan. Miss Carrington, I will talk to you again. Where do you live? 305 Sharia Danya. I must ask you to stay there. And Jordan... Sure, sure, Sam. Good. I may want to see you. Fine. Just look in some dark alley. I'll be there with a knife in my back. I didn't like the fire in the eyes of Shamak and Abdul, so I got out fast and caught a roving taxi. And I was off for the Heliopolis Hotel. Ishmi, the sand diviner, was the kickoff man in this game with death, and I wanted to know who was calling signals. It was about 11 o'clock at night when I walked into the oasis room of the Heliopolis Hotel. Little Ishmi was still missing, so I scouted the dining room and the lobby, then I went back to the manager's office. The door was open, but the office was empty. Something caught my eye. In the center of the desk was a white cotton cloth, and sand was scattered all over everything. I picked up the cloth, began looking around. Then I found myself suddenly suspended in midair as a powerful hand held me from the back at arm's length. Asa Symbol had stopped being polite. Why do you come here? What do you want? Set me down, Goliath, and I'll tell you. Now, who are... Oh, Mr. Jordan. Oh, uh... Who cut your chin, Mr. Symbol? My chin? Why, why uh, better get it? I'm still looking for Ishmi. Ishmi? Yes, your sand diviner. Now, come on, tell me where he is and I'll get out of here. Ishmi is no longer with us. Oh, why not? Why, he is not reliable. There were complaints. That's not what you said this afternoon. Where does he live then? Unfortunately, I do not know. He worked here and you don't even know where he lived? Perhaps you will find him tomorrow, out about the pyramids. Yeah. Maybe. Well, if he comes back, tell him I'm looking for him. I will tell him, Mr. Jordan, most assuredly. Where Asa Symbol fitted into the picture, I didn't know. There were a lot of things I didn't know, and only Ishmi could tell me. 
I fished in my pocket for a couple of piastres and moved outside to a bagel who frequented the corner near the Heliopolis. The first piastre paid off. I learned that Ishmi hung out in a den down in the Muxi section of Cairo. I tossed the bag of the second coin for luck and then caught a taxi. Compared to Ishmi's hangout, my cafe tambourine is as sedate as the tea room of the YWCA. Ishmi was there. Mr. Jordan. Sit right where you are, Ishmi, and get out the sandbag. I am in no mood to read the sand. For six years, I have faithfully served as a symbol. Now he discharges me. Yes, I know. That's what happened between you and your boss. Mr. Jordan, every night it was my custom to read the sand for Asa Symbol. He, re- he relied on me. I have the gift. Sure, sure. Uh, what happened? Tonight I went to his office. I was ready with the sand when he came in. His actions were unspeakable. Why? Not simply because of my confession. But what happened this afternoon? You mean when you came to the cafe tambourine? Yes. I have the gift, Effendi. But when this man offered me two Egyptian pounds to tell you those things, I, I could not refuse. I confessed all this to as a symbol. Wait a minute. Who sent you to the tambourine? Sheikh Abbas Ali. He paid you to read my future? Oh, yes, but I told you only what he instructed. I, I did not read it in the sand, Effendi. Did Abbas Ali tell you to leave that Heliopolis hotel napkin on my table? Uh, no, Mr. Jordan. Uh, that was my mistake. Yeah. You bungled the job, Ishmi. But I am most furious man, Mr. Jordan. Look, if you please. This menu I brought with me from the Oasis room. Read what he says about me. Yeah. Heliopolis proudly presents Cairo's foremost occult specialist, Ishmi, the sand diviner, with a personal endorsement and affection of as a symbol. You see? Now he throws me out, like a rat into the desert. I am most angry. Yeah, yeah. Who's Diana Carrington, Ishmi? I know I have no such person. Besides, I have other... Uh, I must go. Stay right here, Ishmi. Let go of my arm, Mr. Jordan. Let go. Oh, the police that scared you, huh? Hello, Sam. Hello, Jordan. I see you found him for me. Captain Sabaya, meet Eshmi, Cairo's foremost occult specialist. Oh, please, I am only an humble sand divine. Yes, of course. I only wish to ask you your purpose in visiting the Café Tambourine this afternoon. Yeah. Tell Sam what you just told me, Eshmi. What? I, I told this man nothing, Captain Sabaya. Hey, wait a minute. About the visit, Eshmi. I was not at the Café Tambourine. Jordan, what does this mean? He's lying to you, Sam. I know nothing. This man just now came to my table, but I was in no mood to read this. Oh, you little... Wait a minute. Come back here. Let him go, Jordan. Sam, you get away. He's got plenty to tell you. Sit down, Jordan. I will find him when I need him again. Uh, I don't figure you. Jordan, why did you not tell me that Diana Carrington was Sheikh Abbas Ali's wife? Say that again, Sam. Diana Carrington is the wife of Sheikh Abbas Ali. How's that possible? Apparently, the Sheikh did not always stick to his caravan. And also, you did not tell me that Diana was once a dancer in Casablanca. I didn't know, Sam. Believe me. Listen, did you check Sheikh Ali's body? It is gone. There is no trace of it or his caravan. And I do not fancy digging up the entire Sahara Desert to find him. But it doesn't... Wait a minute. Hold everything, Sam. Supposing that wasn't Sheikh Abbas at all. Just a dummy. Jordan, I have talked with both tribesmen who brought you in. They say it was the shame. Well, don't believe them. And at the moment, I am not inclined to believe anyone. You going someplace, Sam? Yes, it is very late. I would advise you to get some sleep, Jordan. Why? For you, tomorrow may be a very busy day. I sat there trying to figure my next move. I picked up the big menu Ishmi had left in his haste, the one with a handsome picture of Asa symbol on the front cover. Then I took a pencil and tried to make like a London detective, writing down all the elements of the mystery. Sheikh Abbas Ali invites me to his tent. I'm a convenient witness to his death, also a suspect. His body disappears. The crystal blonde who took me there turns out to be his wife, which means that he'd been leading a double life. Scramble that all up with an Egyptian sand diviner and you end up either cutting out paper dolls or doodling. So I doodled. Yeah, that made even less sense. Then all at once it made plenty of sense. I had the answer right in front of me. I grabbed the menu, did a fair imitation of a ten-second man out the front door, caught a taxi, and in 14 minutes flat I arrived at the house of Diana Carrington, the widow of Sheikh Abbas Ali. (laughs) 
Rocky Jordan continues after this brief announcement. Following the Monday Night Radio Theater program, you'll want to stay tuned to CBS for My Friend Irma, one of radio's foremost laugh shows. So after Radio Theater, stay on for My Friend Irma at 7, Monday night. Now to conclude tonight's story with Rocky Jordan, Death in the Sand. Diana had given Sam Sabaya her address at headquarters, and I remembered it. 305 Danya, in the foreign colony. Well, quite a layout for the wife of devout wanderer of the desert. By rights, I should have gone right to Captain Sabaya, the Cairo police, but this was too good. I wanted to see Diana. Why, Rocky. Hello, Mrs. Abbas Ali. All right, you know. You killed my husband. Let's talk about it. No, Rocky, not here. Sure. Well, maybe you'd like to call your two sand fleas in again. They're gone. What are you doing here? Looking for your husband. He's dead and buried, thanks to you. It's a fine act, Diana. Now go into your dance for me, minus the veil and the grease paint. Why, I... That was a great show, Diana. Very well, I admit it. Abbas Ali had a sense of the dramatic, I suppose. It was I who danced in native costume in his tent. He told me to. Keep going. That's all. I returned to the tent, and he was dead. You had killed him. Now listen to my story, Diana. And stop me if I'm wrong. Better get out of here, Rocky. Not until I show you this menu with a picture of Asa Symbol. Does it look familiar? Why, I... What, I'm I... Uh, quite a doodler, Diana. I drew a beard on him. All right, have a look. It's not George Bernard Shaw. What's all this nonsense? With a beard, Asa Symbol is a perfect double for Sheik Abbas Ali. All right, what about it? Asa Symbol told me he had a twin brother. Was it Sheik Abbas Ali? Why, what difference does it make? I thought so. While Asa Symbol became wealthy here in Cairo, Abbas Ali lived out in the desert with his caravan. He chose that life. But Abbas Ali started slipping when he met you. After he married you, you had to find a way to support you. He loved me. Sure. So you both dreamed up the whole idea. I was to witness the death of Abbas Ali, then he'd disappear. Only it wasn't Abbas Ali. But you saw him. And I might have been fooled. I should have known when I bent over him and smelled the ether. The ether from the spirit gum that held on his false beard. You'd better forget it, Rocky. All Abbas Ali had to do was shave off his beard, put on his brother's clothes, and suddenly he's the wealthiest Mr. Asa Symbol and nobody's the wiser. Abbas, he knows. I should have been smarter. I was standing with my back to the hall drapes. <clears throat> A hand reached through from behind and again held me in midair. It set me down and turned me around. But this time it didn't let go. Now, Rocky Jordan... You nicked your chin with that razor, Abbas. Diana, you will leave the room. Do it quickly, Abbas. Go at once. Hurry, Abbas. Hurry. More dramatics, Sheik Abbas Ali? Death is not for the eyes of a woman, Rocky. Got plans? Rocky, you were my friend. Yeah. I liked you, Rocky. Take off the record, I've heard it before. Friendship is a rare thing. It is regrettable that it must end. I don't like it either. Listen, Abbas... Abbas's symbol is dead and buried in the desert... Phony beard and all, huh? He will never be found. And neither will you. That's the way it is? Yes, Rocky, my friend. Okay. Then we might as well make it interesting. <laughs> I suddenly jerked myself away from him, made for the door. He was big, but he was fast behind me, like a panther. I had hold of the door latch, and I came up with both feet. He bounced off the big better one like a rubber ball. His huge hand caught me across the face. I landed head first in a pile of chairs and mirrors. <laughs> I swung a chair from the floor and caught his shins. Kill, Bill, kill! He lunged, kicked. I took the first one in the ribs, rolled away, and was up again. But only for a second. The next time I came up slowly, ready for anything. He stood there looking at me in surprise. Then he took two steps, sagged, and dropped hard on his back like a spread eagle. The peculiar scroll of a knife handle stuck out from his chest like a wart and an egg. I spun around, and there in the open French windows stood Ishmi, the sand diviner. I am most angry, Mr. Jordan. Oh, yes. So I notice. Thanks, Ishmi. Too bad you had to kill him, but thanks anyway. I did it not for you, Mr. Jordan. I had been wrong. Yeah, sure, sure. Where is Miss Carrington, his wife? Oh, she'll keep. Sam Sabaya is sure to be along any minute. I do not fear the police now. And I'll, I'll tell Sam you did it to save my life. I had much greater reason. This man killed my faithful employer. My trusted friend. 
Hey, wait a minute. You know this is Abbas Ali? Yes. I know everything. That he took Asa Symbol's place? How'd you figure it out? Figure it out, Mr. Jordan? Well, that was not necessary. Remember, Effendi, I have the gift. With the gift, it is very simple. Oh, now, wait. Don't tell me yet. Yes, Mr. Jordan. I read it all. I read it in the sand. Rocky Jordan is presented from Columbia Square in Hollywood and stars Jack Moyles in the title role. The night story by William Fifield was edited by Gomer Cool and was produced and directed by Cliff Powell with original music by Milton Charles. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed our latest episode of Rocky Jordan. Don't forget, tomorrow night we'll be back with The Tales of the Texas Rangers going live at 5 p.m. GMT. You can email me, brett at tourdate.co.uk. I'd love to know your thoughts on the show. And please, please, if you get a minute or two, check out our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Thanks for listening. I'll be with you seven days a week, each and every week. And I'll see you next time on Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Love you. Bye.